guys what's up it's Lexi and I'm back and oh my god I've missed you guys so much my last video I was like I'm coming back for sure like I'm gonna have another video ready for you right after that a bunch of stuff started to happen which is what this video is all about I'm gonna tell you guys everything that's been going on in my life and this has been one of the toughest years that I've ever had like the shit that happened and then something else happens and something else happens it's like I just need a fucking break and real quick I've been getting a lot of subscribers lately and I just want to say thank you to the new subscribers but to the old subscribers too who have been here with me from day one I see you guys as comments I see you guys still commenting on my video saying you're still watching and you miss me you're thinking of me and I appreciate that so so much you guys have no idea how happy that makes me that you guys like my videos like it's crazy so I just wanted to say thank you for that. I'm also sick. I have a cold. Um, so I'm drinking some tea. Look at this cup. My mom got this for me. So I have a little bit of tea in here. This video, like I said, it's going to be like an update and just telling you guys everything that's been going on. Hopefully in the future, I can tell you guys more and then just tell you everything else that's happening. So I kind of want this to be like a hanging out kind of video. Like we're just chilling. I'm just catching you up on my shit, my, my tea. So yeah, let's just get started. Hey guys, so I just wanted to come on here super quick. Just talk about the video that I posted last before this one. I talk about how I had posted a comment on a post talking about this movie, right? Because I posted saying my husband's in prison and my heart breaks thinking about this. The only thing I'm going to say about Rob is that he's not in there for anything violent, for hurting anybody, hurting himself, hurting me, nothing like that. I'm just going to say like he's in prison. And then I cut to talking about like how I'm coping, how I'm doing, talking about the prison system itself and how they view people a certain way when they have a past with drug abuse, mental health. And then I talk about prison reform. And that's not me saying that people that are arrested and in there should not have to do the time and should not take accountability and responsibility for what they've done the the mistakes they've made prison is supposed to be to rehabilitate people and to make sure that they come out as a better person a better version of themselves so they can come back out in society and live a good life that's what the main point of prison is supposed to be i don't want anyone to take these next few clips the wrong way a lot of what i'm talking about does not have to do with Rob's situation. I'm just talking about prison reform in general and how I'm coping with it. So the main thing that I wanted to talk about in this video is again, something that is still ongoing. And I really wanna talk about this because I want people to know that this is real life. This type of stuff happens and that you're not alone, that people just like you are going through it thankfully i've had nothing but love and support my mom my sisters my brothers it's made things a lot easier but pretty much a few months ago my husband rob was arrested if you guys didn't know me and rob are recovering addicts we have six years clean now and we've done the work we've been living our happy little boring life we've been content this situation isn't embarrassing but it is very shameful when people ask about it i mean the things that they have been saying about me and him we're just junkies and drug addicts and we're trash even though i have proof that i've been clean for six years where i am drug tested every two weeks um but to them i'm still trash to listen to someone say that calling me dangerous because i've been in a psych ward even before i met rob because i struggled with my mental health when you got clean and you did the work to live a better life and do better for yourself and then still have someone look at you and doesn't even see you as a human is so disheartening like there's just so much stigma surrounding it so that's a big reason why i wanted to talk about it so if you're going through this please let me know how you're coping I hope you're doing okay it took me a really long time to get to where i am now um, but the first month i was broken i was broken um i didn't want to leave my house i didn't want to go to work i was calling out all the time leaving early and it was really really hard for me being someone who is still very codependent i just wanted to stay in my bubble with my husband but it took a lot of time patience love and support 
and I was able to get myself out of that hole that I was digging myself into. So with that being said, I'm okay. Rob is okay. He's going to be okay. We're taken care of. He has a good attorney and we're going to make sure that he comes out better and stronger and I'm better and stronger than ever. So when we're together, we're going to be perfect. We're going to turn the situation into a good one. I had a Mexico trip planned out as well that was already paid for. The plane was paid for. The house was paid for and um, I didn't end up going because it was a week after everything happened and I was just so distraught I was exhausted and I couldn't bear to leave and not be able to get a phone call from Rob or leave Feather by herself so I didn't go um, my family went and they had a great time I'm hoping that in the future that I can go again but yeah that's pretty much everything with that like I said I can't give too much detail but I did want to share that with you guys. So something else that I wanted to share with you guys is grief. Uh, one of my dear friends, my co-workers, uh, passed away. He was in the hospital for about a week and a half and then he passed. And a couple weird things happened with that situation. So we're going to name him Vinny just so I don't say his real name. He was the most kind and caring and sweet person he'd been going through a lot it was just really unexpected and really sad so he does have his funeral happening tomorrow but again some weird stuff started happening right after he passed that i wanted to talk about so the day that my manager came in and told all of us like Vinny passed away we all kind of took it really hard and were really confused really sad about it so I had texted him a few days prior just telling him like, hey, I hope you're feeling better, get a lot of rest, drink a lot of water, um, but you're going to be okay. An hour later, I got a text message from his phone and it's an asterisk, like a star. So I don't know what that was about. Another thing that happened the night that he passed away, the truck that he always uses that has not given us any issues before, it's never given us problems, broke down. It just broke down and they weren't able to get it going until the next day so it would not turn on it wouldn't budge it wouldn't even make any noise it wouldn't crank one of the drivers who was his really good friend but they would like talk shit to each other the night that he passed away he was driving to a call and the back of his truck started moving up and down so I was supposed to film this video yesterday. Before I had left work, I had talked to my manager and one of the drivers about Vinny. We were talking about him and like the jokes he used to make. He used to get off at 4 p.m. and so did I. We we're the only ones that would get off at 4. As I'm walking to my car, I get a phone call. And when I look down, it's Vinny's phone calling me. When I go to pick it up, the phone call ends. And I try to immediately call it back and the phone is disconnected. So I have said this in another video before. There's an office in the back that's locked up after 2 p.m. No one's allowed in there. About a year ago, when it was open to everybody, Vinny would go in there. He would make coffee for everybody. Now that it's locked down, I started hearing the coffee pot being moved around. And it would be picked up and put on different surfaces. So put down on the glass table, put down on the wood table. I kept hearing that um, the motion detector lights would turn on and off back there when nobody was back there. The new dispatcher that's there from 6 p.m. to 6 a.m. has been telling us that she has been hearing noises back there. She's been hearing the bathroom back there flush, the water running, and then she started hearing the paper towel machine going on and off. So she would hear like a paper towel come out, but then she started hearing the tear. So she would hear it go off and then she would hear somebody tear it. And that kept happening. So she's there by herself all night. So she was freaking out. In talking about all of that, I kind of want to get into some stuff that's been happening here with the paranormal. I have talked about some of this stuff on TikTok. First thing that had happened that I think I uploaded here actually, I was outside one night. It was like 11 o'clock at night. It was dark already, but I was outside smoking a cigarette with my laptop. As I'm sitting there, I hear something behind me. It sounds like someone starts laugh, like giggling. And then I hear meow, 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 meow. It's not a cat. It sounds like a man pretending to be a cat. 
and I freaked out because it was really close and nobody was around me. So I start filming, I film around, I uploaded that video. And after that, somebody commented saying that they could see like eyes in the video. So I had made that like skit of me like doing little things to protect myself. Accessories are gonna protect me, my evil eye, a little cross, my Bible. And then I put this cross. I know for a fact I threw it away outside, but the next day, I come back in and this cross is sitting on my table and it's now dirty and full of hair. I was freaked out. I was like, what the fuck? In that same week that I had filmed those videos and that like meow meow experience happened, I was sitting here and we start hearing noise outside. We start hearing walking, um, loud bangs, you know, those like weird noises that we usually hear. I go to turn on my camera. So while I'm recording myself, I hear a bang, a big bang, and the entire house fucking moves. The entire house shakes, and I hear a big ass bang, and then I hear footsteps, but it's on the roof. So I'm like, what the fuck was that? Like, who the fuck is up there? It didn't sound like a cat, because the cat goes up there sometimes, but it sounded like a person, like really heavy steps. Fuck. I was freaking out. I was like, what the fuck? I don't know what that was. Just real quick, not a lot of paranormal stuff has been happening. Like, at all. Like, the stuff that I'm going to tell you guys right now, it's not that much stuff. And it has not been recent. So now I'm hearing all these noises. This is like the third time that I've heard a noise in here. But anyway, a few days go by and we're in the back. We're laying down, me and a feather. It's late as fuck at night. We hear the noise outside. We hear the walking, the talking, the bangs. And then we feel the entire fucking house move again. And I hear the footsteps. I stick my phone out the window and I don't see anything. Nothing's there. So I'm freaking out. I'm like, why the fuck does this keep happening? That whole like house moving thing continued to happen. It would happen randomly in the middle of the night, during the day, we'd be sitting here and it would just move. And there's no explanation for it because nobody would be outside. My mom came and picked me up and she had my older brother and my younger brother with her. So I had gone in the house, I was grabbing my stuff. While I was doing that, my brother was outside and he starts calling my name. It's my nickname that it's kind of embarrassing, so I don't want to say it, but the way that he said it in his voice is very distinct. Like, telling me to hurry up, pretty much. And I was like, hold on! I leave. A few days later, I'm here by myself again. It's late at night, and I hear that exact way that he said my name outside. Lexi, Lexi, Lexi! Right outside. And my brother does not live close to me at all. That was my first thought, like, oh, he's here. So I went and looked and nobody was there. And then I went to call him and I'm like, wait, why the fuck would he be here and like not tell me? Like, what if I wasn't here? So I texted him. I'm like, dude, I just fucking heard you yelling my name outside of the house. Like the exact way you say it. And he's like, what the fuck? I'm like, yeah, it's fucking weird. Another thing that's been happening is these knocks, but really random ones. And then I kept hearing like this. I started hearing that noise on the floor. Like if a dog or a cat is like going around the floor like that, but you would be sitting next to me. So I don't know what the fuck that was about, but that's pretty much everything that's been going on as far as like paranormal stuff. Okay, I'm back. So what is worse than a ghost? What is scarier than a monster? What is something that scares everyone? regardless of what they believe in. People. So something else that I've been dealing with has been a fucking stalker. He's been coming around, walking by the house, being a fucking weirdo, doing weird shit around here. Let's just get into it. Months and months ago, my husband was outside working on the car when I was at work. He saw a man walking up and down the street, like past her house. So he comes up to him and he asks him like, hey, do you need something? This man turns around and he's wearing a wife beater. He is wearing latex gloves 
and he looks high out of his mind. This man turns, looks at my husband and says, quick question, have you seen the white girl with the big ass that lives around here? She lives in one of these houses and I just want to talk to her. My husband hears this and immediately goes off. Like, you need to get the fuck out of here. Get the fuck away from here. If I see your face again, I'm gonna fuck you up. I don't want to see your fucking face around here anymore. And we don't. We don't see him for a while. So, a few weeks ago, I was outside with my manager. He was helping me charge the batteries for my car. And he had the big battery charger out there. So, um, we're out there. We're talking. It's like 5, 6 p.m. and we see this man walking up and down the street. He is also wearing a wife beater. He's just walking up and down the street looking very sketchy. I immediately get a bad vibe from this man. Like, bad, bad vibe. He hasn't said anything to us. He hasn't done anything, right? So I ignore it. And then I see him again walking the opposite way. And then he starts screaming at somebody across the street like fighting with them talking shit this goes on for a few minutes and me and my neighbor are just out there just watching him like so we both leave so i'm talking with my manager and he says hey watch this real quick i'll be right back so he leaves for a few minutes and when i'm out there standing by myself it's late it's like seven eight o'clock so it's not super dark but it's dark i see him coming by again and i was out there smoking a cigarette so as soon as I see him, I'm like, I have a bad feeling about this. So I start slowly backing up and going back in the house and I slowly start closing the door so he doesn't notice I'm running away from him. Well, he sees that, he notices, and he starts walking faster towards me and screams, Good night, sweetie. So I shut the door, I lock it. The first thought that comes to mind is if somebody knocks on the door tonight do not answer do not answer there's only a few people that knock on my door which is my manager and one friend who is rob's friend i know their knocks well that night it's around 11 12 p.m i'm sitting in this spot next to the window and i hear shuffling i hear walking and then I start to hear music, like oldies music. So I start to hear that. I'm like, hmm. And I start to hear banging on the fucking window. And my body froze. My body just froze. I knew that it was him. Instinctively, I was like, I just know it's this motherfucker. So I sit here. And usually when people knock and it's not one of those knocks, Feather loses her shit. She'll start barking. And she was sitting right next to me, not a peep, not a fucking peep. Like she knew, like, oh, I better not say anything. We sat here in silence, no movement, no nothing. Just sat here in silence and waited for, for him to stop knocking. After 10 minutes of knocking and banging on the window, he finally walked away. So that happens that night. Next night, everything's fine. Everything's normal. The night after that... I hear banging on my window again with that same oldies music and I'm like what the fuck is this guy doing because I didn't want to make any movements I didn't want him to know I was here so I just didn't move I didn't do anything after he finally walks away I call my neighbor which is my manager and I tell him well, you and your brother need to come here now somebody keeps banging on my window and I'm sure I just know it's that guy we saw the other day fighting with that other guy across the street he's like okay he comes over we can't find him so he's like you need to call the cops I don't like calling the cops I know this is a dangerous situation but I just knew they weren't going to take me seriously. I've had a stalker situation in the past. It was at this window where he was showing up. And the only reason why we caught him is because he was standing outside of the window talking to himself so loudly that we woke up and I caught him out there. And after that, he just kept stalking me and Rob. I called the cops and they didn't do anything. They made a report and they're like, all right, well, I guess call us if he tries to break in. So I was like, I'm not going to call the cops. It's going to be a waste of time. A few days go by and I hear the knocking again. But this time, it's banging on the window. 
and I start to hear him say, let me in. I'm like, are you fucking kidding me? So finally, I told my manager, I'm like, hey, I need to see the camera footage and I need to get that footage so I can call the cops and I can give them this information because this is too much. I look at the footage and sure enough, there he is. And actually, I'm gonna show that footage of him walking back and forth in front of my house and the camera that's facing my door doesn't work. Like it glitches because it got wet. So unfortunately, this is the only footage that I have, but this is the man that's been bothering me. He did the same thing a few more times where he bangs on the window and says, let me in. I finally called the cops, telling them that I have these videos. And someone else is like, just go to the police station. So that's what I'm planning on doing because it's still ongoing. So another thing having to do with the cops that just happened. I have a car that hasn't been turning on. I had some electrical issues with it already so i go out there i call one of my drivers and i'm like hey can you please come to my house and tow my car to just move it on the other side so like they know that i'm moving it you know i do that i go to work and i get a call this morning from my manager my car was broken into when the police was called parking enforcement came Instead of them trying to make a report for anything, they try to tow the car. I drive down here in a rush. The cops that were here already left. And the parking enforcement starts writing tickets up for every single car here. Including ones that are parked in the driveway, which is not allowed. So when I got there, my neighbor was talking shit to him like, hey, come out of the car because he was sitting in the car. He didn't want to talk to anybody. He was just writing up tickets for everybody there. He's like, come out. I want to talk to you. I have some questions for you. I want to know what cars, what other cars you're, you're ticketing, you know? He wouldn't answer any question and then he just left. And as soon as my truck pulls up, we see another tow truck coming out. One that does like repos and stuff. So he comes out, he pulls up, all of a sudden the parking enforcement guy comes out and he starts talking shit. Like, oh, so you're towing the car. You're towing the car. I'm like, yes, I'm towing the car. You didn't want to talk to me, so I don't want to talk to you. The tow truck driver doesn't have to talk to you either because he's my friend. So he's like, all right, we'll get it the fuck out of here because if not, I will take it. I will tow it right now. Like, fucking asshole. He was such a dick. So now I have to tow my car for the next few days until I can fix it. Because I was planning on fixing it tomorrow. I was like, dude, just give me another day. Like, And he was an impersonating an officer. When we tried to talk to him, he was like, don't disrespect me. You're going to talk to a police officer like that? And then he gave tickets to everyone unlawfully where he wasn't supposed to. So that's pretty much everything that's been happening to me. It's just like things just keep happening. And it's like, I just... I'm sick now because of this because of the stress. I feel like I'm just rolling with the punches It's all you can do, right? It is what it is so Real quick. I have to touch on this. I think it's so funny, but I do want to bring it up if anyone has seen any like weird little comments that i've been coming up on my youtube channel it happens on random videos I talk a lot of shit on instagram especially when it's a man talking shit about a woman it's just a video of her cooking pasta and there'll be men in the comments like this shouldn't even count as food this looks like fucking disgusting trash you shouldn't get married just talking shit i will talk shit back i will talk shit back and you know their first thing to do the first thing that they always do they are so predictable they look at my pictures they're like you're fucking ugly which that's a lie that's a goddamn lie but they go to my channel and they're like, oh my god, look at her. She's got a YouTube channel. How cringy, how embarrassing. Watch my videos. I don't fucking care. It's so fucking hilarious that they always do that. They always go for that. 
it's been happening a lot more and like their opinion is valid if they think i'm stupid or they think i'm ugly that's fine like that's pretty much the end of this video i think i kind of touched on everything that i wanted to talk about again i appreciate every single one of you guys the people that have been since day one thank you thank you thank you i wouldn't be doing this without you guys like really i i, I wouldn't there'd be no reason to um so i thank you and i really hope that i can continue to keep putting videos out that you guys like that you guys enjoy I really want to be consistent on this but i did want to put all of this out there to let you guys know um what's going on if you're going through the same thing i love you and i'm here for you and i hope that you find a way to heal time and patience is needed and hope is needed faith is needed for when stuff like this happens but we're gonna get there we're gonna be okay so thank you for watching if you guys like this video or like my videos feel free to subscribe until then i'll see you guys later bye